PFAS chemicals are a growing public health and environmental concern nationwide. Scientific evidence about the human and environmental health impacts PFAS chemicals is growing, and advice and regulation continues to change. Our PFAS Basics videos are tools to help you make informed decisions to protect your health and your loved ones in this changing landscape. These videos are updated as new guidance comes out to make sure that you get the best available advice. To start, we'll talk about what PFAS are, where they came from, and why they are a problem. So what are PFAS? PFAS is the short name for a large family of chemicals called per and polypleural alkyl substances. You may have seen PFAS called forever chemicals in the news. PFAS are human-made chemicals that have been produced since the 1940s and used in a wide range of consumer products since the 1950s. PFAS are useful because they hold up well in hot conditions and can repel grease, water, and oil. Because of these unique properties, PFAS are used in many products, including stain-resistant products like stain-proof carpets or furniture, waterproof and water-resistant products like some outdoor clothing, grease-resistant products like fast food wrappers and microwave popcorn bags, and nonstick cookware products, including some nonstick pans. PFAS were also historically used in certain types of firefighting foams, like aqueous film-forming foams, or AFFF, at military bases and airports. There are thousands of different types of PFAS, each with their own name or acronym. Two of the most studied PFAS chemicals are perfluorooctane sulfonic acid, PFOS, PFOS, and perfluorooctanoic acid, or PFOA, PFOA. These two chemicals were phased out of use in most products in the U.S. because of health concerns. PFAS were invented, made, and used before the United States had regulations on chemical production. In the 1970s, scientists started to learn about the toxic nature of some PFAS chemicals. By the early 2000s, other scientists discovered these specific PFAS chemicals in most people's blood, even if they didn't work in or near the factories using PFAS. They also found PFAS chemicals in the outdoor environment. In 2001, the U.S. started phasing out production of certain PFAS chemicals like PFOS and PFOA, though many other types of PFAS are still used. Since then, scientists have studied the environmental and human health impacts of PFAS and learned more about where PFAS have polluted outdoor and indoor environments. These studies show that PFAS are a problem because some are toxic, they can escape from consumer products and get into the surrounding environment, they can get into soil and groundwater from runoff of firefighting foams like AFFF, they don't break down easily in soil, water, and air, they can travel long distances in water and air, which means they spread easily in the outdoor environment, and some can build up in our bodies and in plants and animals through a process called bioaccumulation. This is important and a problem because some PFAS could harm human health when they build up to high enough levels in your body. Not all PFAS have the same impact on people or the environment. In our next videos, we'll talk about what the known and suspected health impacts are, how you can be exposed to PFAS and strategies for protecting your health. For more information, see our website at doh.wa.gov slash PFAS.